Good morning, you're welcome to church this morning. As we prepare our hearts to worship us just then. Thank him for his goodness, his mercies, his loving kindness, for his faithfulness in our lives.
Lord. Amen. Give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb to take your seat. As we gather around the Lord's table and our own homes this morning, let us remember on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, To eat this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So let us all take the bread and give thanks for his broken body. Let us take the wine and give thanks for that precious blood that was shed, giving thanks to the lamb that was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. O precious Lamb of Calvary, we gave you all the honour, praise and worship. Psalm 117 says, Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples, for great is his love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Let's praise him together.
Good morning and welcome to this service. And if you listen to it online, uh, then praise God. My days are God again, we continue that. This last week it was go ahead and do it. This week, arise and go over Joshua chapter 1. One read the whole 18 verses, you can do that yourself. Use for time's sake. After the death of Moses, a servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all his people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you, nor forsake you. It says in verse 6, be strong and have a good courage. Verse 7, be strong and very courageous. Verse 9, be strong and of good courage. Verse 10, then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourselves, for within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God has given you to possess. Verse 17, Just as we heeded Moses in all things, so we will heed you. Only the Lord your God be with you, as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your words, and all that you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and of a good courage. Would you say amen? amen. Father, bless your word into our hearts this morning. This is Joshua, this new leader, and the people are to move to new beginnings. And we all like to hear about new beginnings. We like to hear about new births and families, new things happening, new jobs, and you know, all sorts of things that are new, but we like to hear about them. You know, but what else has God got for us? What blessings are we going to step into and what can we do for that kingdom work? We're coming out of a lockdown, I trust to new things. We're not looking back, but trusting for new things. This new leader in our passage is encouraged to arise and go over. Everybody say arise and go over. Arise, arise and go over. Maybe we will be required to do the same, stepping over some hurdles, making some new crossings. Nothing is insurmountable with God on our side, friends. This new leader, and often when you think of leaders in the scripture, you think of Joshua. And we can think of Joshua the slave. He was born into slavery. How he learned there, all the signs and the wonders that were performed by God. Read Exodus chapter 7 to chapter 12. Joshua the soldier. A general, exceptional military skills, a man of courage. Joshua, the servant, received from his life. He was faithful and loyal servant. Joshua, the spy. Joshua was among 12 chosen to spy out the land of Canaan. Read Numbers 13. Two spies, Caleb and Joshua, say, Trust God and move into the land. Then Joshua, the successor. Numbers 27, 18. Take Joshua, the son of Nun, who has a spirit in him, and lay your hands on him. See, Moses, in his final message to Israel, said that God would use Joshua to defeat their enemies and help them claim this promised inheritance. So quite an interesting portfolio. And of course, if you look at his whole background, Joshua was born into the tribe of Ephraim, one of the most dominant tribes of Israel, second only to Judah. The spiritual heir of Moses, Joshua, led the Hebrew people to Canaan. Cannot help but wondering what happened to Moses' sons. I was not one of them. Did Moses fall so far short in his supreme duty as a father? After Moses led the people out of Egypt, why did not Gershom or Eliezer step into the great father's footsteps and lead Israel onto victory? We know that something went wrong because Gershom's son Jonathan acted as a priest to the Danites. When they set up the graven image, remember in Judges 18 and 30, then they set up a graven image and they appointed Jonathan the son of Gershom, the son of Moses, as a priest. See, Gershom and Eliezer may have been aloof from Moses, but Joshua was always found orbiting the great man's 
feet. He was always around this old great man. The young man felt the drawing power of Moses. Could he stand near him? You know, where are we when things need done? When things are happening? Can I encourage you to gather together, church? Arise and go over this morning. You know, there's great lessons for us uh, to learn here uh, this morning. You know, you can read the story of two people called Eldad and Medad who prophesied in the camp in Numbers 11, 26 to 29. Read that for yourself. You know, but it says, but Moses replied, are you jealous for my sake? He said to Joshua, I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. So no doubt these were exceptional men, but Joshua was jealous of them, however, on behalf of Moses. And what did the old man say, my Lord? He says, my Lord Moses, forbid them, he cried. But what does Moses say back? Envious thou for my sake? Joshua got a great glimpse of the greatness of his hero. If we would only allow ourselves to get a closer walk with God. Would you say amen? A greater glimpse of him each and every day. Desiring to keep close, to walk close, to serve him, to love him, to seek him. You know, when the Amalekites launched a treacherous attack against Israel, Moses searched for a warrior. Do you remember the story? He could leave the valley for a warrior. He wanted to leave him in the valley to fight. He selected a devoted follower called Joshua. Let me see what you can do with Amalek. In other words, he was saying, you fight and I'll pray. You watch out for victory down below and I'll hold you on high. You can read all about that in Exodus 17. But are you ready to be selected? Or are we all taught? You see, the typology of scripture, Amalek really is the flesh. It's the flesh at work. When you see Amalek in ourselves, when we lose our temper, react angrily, or a slight to an insult or anything, an accusation, when we attack somebody else, Victory over Amalek symbolizes victory over the works of the flesh. Yeah. The power of the Holy Spirit, that's why you need that in your life. Read Galatians 5, 10 to 26 yourself, but we'll just skip through it here. Um, it says, I have confidence in you, in the Lord. Then it says, for you brethren have been called to liberty. And do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this that you should love your neighbour as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. It says, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Too many are walking in their own ways. Even believers will say the craziest things these days. Flesh lust eh, are wars against eh, the, the spirit and the work of the spirit. And it says, but if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies. Shall we go on? Envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But, everybody say but, the fruit of the Spirit. Is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. So if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let the Spirit work in your lives, friends. Would you say amen? amen? A spirit of love and unity, being led by the Holy Spirit. So we were praying together, winning souls together. But where were we? Moses chose Joshua to another, on another occasion, friends. When he sent 12 men to spy, and you all know that, we touched on it there, but the uh, excursion was invaluable training for this young leader. He would yet have to cross the Jordan. He would need to size up the foe. He was Judge Falker. We will have challenges to face. As individuals, we have decisions to make. But Joshua saw the same Canaanite giants, the same high walls, the same giant sons of Anak, as did the other spies. Others saw a defiant foe. Joshua saw a defeated foe. Would you say praise the Lord? Moses was satisfied with Joshua. He was content. Joshua would be a worthy heir. And he didn't let Moses down. Joshua was prepared by his background to become the successor. See, there is often preparation we've done in our lives. Don't resist. 
Sometimes we try and resist. God is working in our lives. He's preparing you. You might not be behind the pulpit. Because it's great speaking to people one on one. We're all getting prepared for something, that's all I'm trying to say. You don't need to be in a big position. We're all getting prepared. We just say amen. And there's often preparation. So let the change uh, take you to become the person that God wants you to be. A faithful, obedient, loyal, courageous person. See, he was prepared by devotion, by his commitment to Moses. It was prepared by executing discipline, by subduing Amalek. So devotion and discipline. It was also prepared by duty, by carrying out assignments with spiritual insight and with courage. You have good courage. New ventures often take us to look at, at new leaders. Yes, but today can I encourage every single person arise and go over because where are we going? They, well, they were going to get a new land. And the new land had been promised. It's good to understand. God has given you and given this church many, many promises. He's spoken many times, I'm sure to us and to your life. But the word land is found 87 times in the King James Version in the book of Joshua. A record of Israel's entering, conquering and claiming the promised land. We are too passive as Christians in the UK, but sometimes in a laid back manner, with our feet up, waiting on all the promises of God to fall into our laps. The heroes of faith administer justice and they gained what was promised. What are we going to do to gain what is promised for us? The new land is waiting for us, but it will take us to get out there and gain it. Arise and go over. God had promised it to Abraham. Read Genesis chapter 12 yourself but it says get out of your country in other words your comfort zones it says i will make you great i will bless you and you shall be a blessing i will bless those who bless you and so on promises made so abraham departed in other words he took steps forward he took steps forward they departed to go to the land of canaan so they came to the land of canaan they took steps and they came if we don't take steps we ain't going to come in to anything you can read more of that in Genesis 13, 15, 17, eh, and all the rest. 24, it was reaffirmed to Isaac in 26, Jacob in 28, descendants in eh, chapter 50. It reaffirms many times. But in Moses' farewell speech in Deuteronomy, he frequently mentioned the land and the nation's responsibility to possess it. Do we believe God's word for our nation? He wants to restore and make this land great. You see, the word land also is found 200 times in Deuteronomy and possessed 50 times. So it was pretty important. Arise and go over this morning. God called the promised land good. Good. Deuteronomy chapter 8. So there's more reading for you at home. I have time to get through it. Verse 7 says, Bringing you into a good land. Food is plentiful and nothing lacking. When you have eaten your fill, be sure to praise the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. In other words, when God brings us into what he has promised, be thankful. When he answers your prayers, be thankful. You so often we ask him for things and he takes us through and he brings us through. Isn't that right? Has he ever brought you through something? He yes. has. Be honest before him this morning. Give him the thanks. Give him thanks. He says, be careful to give thanks. In contrast to all that, you see the monotony and the barrenness of Egypt and the blessings of obedience. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, there's more reading for you. It says, be careful to obey. Go in and take over. You will enjoy a long life, a land that the Lord your God cares for. He watches over it. Then he will send the rains in their proper season, the early, the late rains, so you can bring in your harvest of grain, your wine and olive oil. I wonder, is it time for the showers, for that rain of blessing and those rains of showers of blessing for a harvest to come for us in Falkirk? The work's still going on. Hallelujah. And we're coming out of lockdown. And I believe there's new things for us, friends. New things. And he, and he brings you, to, he brought Israel to a place of rest, their inheritance, the dwelling place of God. It says in Deuteronomy 12 and 9, when you arrive in the place of rest, the Lord your God is giving you. 
We keep working, we keep striving. I'll give you a place of rest. And after June's slavery and Egypt, misery in the wilderness, Israel were to enter into what God had for them. Imagine God has in some new things for us. They would finally find their rest in the promised land. In Joshua 1 13, the Lord your God has given you rest and has given you this land. He was bringing them right through. Did you say amen? amen. Joshua eleven twenty three 23 says, So Joshua took the whole land according to the, that the Lord had said to Moses. Then the land rested from war. So there was going to be peace for a while. Rest shows up again. Even, even when you read Hebrews 4 and 1. For as long then, then as that promise of resting in him pulls us on to God's goal for us. So when you're actually resting in him as well, he's pulling towards the goal that he has for you as an individual, that he has for us as a church, illustrating the victory that Christians can have if they give their all to the Lord. Give their all to him. Ezekiel calls it the most beautiful of lands. Daniel said it's a pleasant land, a glorious land. But it was a new land. And there was also the importance of this land. It was placed as a centre of nations. Ezekiel 38 12 says, who live at the centre of the world. Friends, Abraham first left all of the Chaldees, as you know, to go to the new land. Isaac, Jacob were born there. God announced that one day that the Redeemer would come. Hallelujah. From the tribe of Judah. Read Genesis 49. From the family of David, 2 Samuel 7. We would be born of a virgin, Isaiah chapter 7, and one day die for the sins of the world, say praise the Lord. Isaiah 53, Psalm 22, read up your Bible. All these important events in this drama, this plan of redemption would take place in this great land, the land that Joshua was called to conquer and to claim. We see this whole way of introduction that it was promised and it was important. People church today, there are things waiting us ahead. New ventures. Are we ready? Arise. Can I encourage you? And go over. Arising. This is not... Well, I'm saying this is it now. Let's go for it. What are we going to have to do? Where will we have to go in order for the children of Israel to get to the new land? They had to cross. They had to do something. The Jordan to you and I could be a barrier that God wants us to cross over as a church. PCF, we have stepped through many doors in our history. We have faced many challenges, crossed over many things. Why do we keep going? Because God has called us to himself. God has called us, he's saved us and he's placed us. That is why when it is difficult, we still have hope. We have hope. We still have purpose because we belong to God, we're a family. Arise and go over as a church and personally as well. We need to go forward and cross your Jordan. When pandemic restrictions change, in faith, we will leave it behind. We won't be holding on to it. We're not binding ourselves up with man's laws. Hallelujah, we sang the first service. We're no longer slaves. We're free in Christ and him crucified. Arise and go over. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, hallelujah, he is what? A new creation. The old things have gone. The new have, new has come. See, salvation from God is not just saving you from something, but to something and for something. Okay? Salvation from God is not just saving you from something, but to something and for something. Don't just be staying in the unworthy mode and pity me and all the rest of it. Friends, you're important to God this morning. You're a child of God. Don't sit in the unworthy mode and think, oh, I'm on this sin and I'm saved by grace. That's all there is for me. No, God has got something for you. There's new ventures, new things. I press toward the matter of the prize of the high calling, Paul said. And there's that same high calling for each of us, for your dreams. And your destiny in Christ. It's about your Christian life moving over. Arise and go over. We can easily say we want to move forward, but we can only keep talking about it. And it may all sound good, it may even be in prayer mode every day about it. But are you ready for what it will cost? And are we ready as a church? 
breakthrough might mean smashing down that wall. Anybody ever moved house? I'm sure you have. Packing up house, changing your surroundings, the new decor, all the plans. Can I say something? Pack all you like, but if you don't phone the removal van, you won't be going anywhere. Isn't that right? Unless you're fit and strong, you're doing it all yourself. But you're not going anywhere. That'd be me. You see, we can do all the talking, in other words, we can pray at all the prayer meetings, we can do all the planning and take not one step forward. We need to step out and press on, arise and go over. Just say praise the Lord. Joshua 1 and 9. I command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. That's a great verse to hold on to, isn't it? Tuck away for some day when things are tough. I command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Spoke about it last week as well. Keep that close to you. When we need that word, we can pull it out. Read it. I was reading of Warren Worsby and how he was chosen to succeed very distinguished and godly leaders and to carry on their work. And he mentioned how the widow and a son of his predecessor assured him of their support. The deacon who said he would do anything including washing his car and doing his shoes. Warren Worsby did not ask him to do any of them, but the words of that man showed and expressed the encouraging attitude of all the church staff and the leaders. Now the recruit was taking over from the veteran, and 25 years later, when again he took over from someone else, the same encouragement was given, for when the midget seems to be taking the place of the giant, you appreciate all the encouragement that God sends you away, he says. Warren Worsby says, what a new leader needs is not advice but encouragement. To encourage literally means to put your heart into. Oh, if we could be a people of that caliber, he says. Joshua had been instructed. And the people said they would be with him as they were with Moses. So can I encourage this morning, let's be with each other and arise and go over. All he needed was for all to step in with him. We are the same as we make our plans. Might not be plain sailing, it may be hard, but we've got victories ahead because we're overcomers and we'll see that deliverance. Crossing the Jordan was a journey for us to cross over to new things, to new land. It's our journey. You may experience the good and the bad along the way, but are you still ready to go? Are you still ready to go? Arise and go over. Let us possess all that he has promised. They had to go. We have to go on, friends. People's church focus needs to advance and go. And take into our possession. You see, no pandemic is to hold back the winning of souls and the winning of your family and the winning of your neighbours and the winning of the people in Scotland for Jesus. Pastor, you don't know my problems. That's right, and you don't know mine. Because we all rise up in the morning and things are going on in life. Good things, bad things, things that we just have to deal with, things that we have to sort out. But when you begin your journey and you're crossing over, you might have challenges, you might have stresses or strains, but there's a pushing forward. And speaking about Canaan, we'll not get us there. We need to do something. Would you say amen? amen. See in the warning in verse 11, it says, tell the people to get the provisions ready. Preparation, purify yourselves. The instructions, Take a few steps into the river and stop. Which means your feet might get wet, but the leaders and the carry and the art of the coming and they're going to take steps forward. And as we take steps forward, we have to step into that water and stop and take hold of all that is ours. Leaders, are we ready to go? Arise and go forward. I wrote down here, feed your faith and your doubts will starve to death. It was a wee thing that I read. Feed your faith and your doubts will starve to death. So let's be a people of faith and arise and go forward. Like the old song would say, trust and obey, for there's no other way. We can't say we trust and then live the way we like. 
Some people would tell you that, did they? It won't add up and our lives won't touch others. We need to make a difference for Jesus. Hallelujah. Bring your family with you. Some of you say, well, Pastor, the kids never listen. Any parent ever said that? Bring your kids with you. But they never listen. Well, can I tell you this? Children have never been very good at listening to their elders. But they have never failed to imitate them. So be a good example. Be a good example. Let your words and actions add up. Get into gear. The car won't go forward unless you do. You know, your life won't unless you engage in what God is calling you. If we become ordinary run of the mill church, it's going to fizzle out, friends. We want to be more than that. Let's get on board the real deal this morning. A journey, an adventure in Christ, a trip of a lifetime, and cross over, arise, and go over. See, friends, this is not a rebuke this morning. It's time for you and I to take up the challenge once and for all. It's an encouragement for us when we're coming out of lockdown. There's more and there's new things. Hallelujah. Amen. Soul's price has been paid. The price for all the souls has been paid. Hallelujah. See, we're investing. And if you read Haggai uh, chapter 1, you know, I'm not going to read it all, but it talks about consider how things are going for you. It says consider how things are going for you. It repeats it again and again. And then it says to go up, to bring down, to rebuild. And it says about his house lying in ruins. Well, we're busy building our own lives and our own homes. And that is why the heavens have withheld the dew and the earth has withheld its crops. Is that why things are held back? Is that why the Bible has hit a central belt yet? It says, we encourage the whole remnant of God's people obeyed the message from the Lord their God. It says, the whole remnant of God's people then came and began this work. So arise and go forward this morning. Arise and go over. Don't look at others. What can you do? Don't get too comfortable. Take the challenge. How long are you saved? Are you grown in God? Do something still. Do you, some of you still need to be spoon fed? See, we need to be grown in God. Hallelujah. We've got to go. We don't stay the same. Hallelujah. Forget our sorts, friends. That's when we get bothered. We won't question what's wrong. We, we keep saying we're tired and it's hard and oh, they annoy me and it's their fault. And we, we say, we say, we say, nothing. we're making excuses. Look at yourself. Pastor, look at yourself. I am. As I wrote all this down, for God, can I say something? God still loves you. The answer doesn't lie with this, that, and the other. The solution is not in whatever. Jesus still loves you. The answer is only in one place and one person, and his name is Jesus. Jesus is still the answer, friends. Is he your saviour today? I've said before we've got a tendency to measure victory by looking at ourselves. No, look at Jesus. Are you saved this morning? Is your name written in his book? See, when we're saved, then shape up. Shape up, friends. Don't look at yourself. Be an overcomer. You look at yourself, you know, disaster comes. You look at Jesus, he'll see you through. And he'll build you up and he'll take you on and you'll be able to arise and go over. Don't boast in yourself. Boast in Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit reign in your life this morning. It's as simple as that. We said it last week, and I think a few weeks ago, present your bodies as living services, and then be strong and be steady in, in his work. Arise, go over. Churches often don't cross over, for it's too hard sometimes. Can I say this morning, we are crossing over. We are going forward. Are you coming? Too many talk about being on the journey and don't want to take the steps. But let's be different and say, look, by the way, we've made it. Look, I've made it. Look, if I can make it, you can make it. We're already here. The new land is great, it's probably exciting. The church is growing and things are happening and we're excited and we're just bringing people because of the excitement. Hallelujah. 
The crossing over needs to take place in your heart and life and in minds this morning. We need to be a people that's already crossed. So don't let the wrong company distract you or anything else. Cross over. Arise and go over, friends. God has already taken us to this point in the challenge. Let us be a people that will step on and step into. And maybe it'll get personal sometimes. God might say, right, arise and go over. You're ready. I want you to go here. I want you to go there. I want you to witness to so-and-so. I want you to speak to... You know, we make it so personal. But that's a good thing. That's an exciting thing to be facing. Maybe I'll send you to that backslider as a close. Maybe I'll send that backslider who's been back out seven times and they've disappeared seven times. Maybe I'll say, go to them again. Because that's the time. This is the time. Amen. Amen. We arise and we go over for purpose and for his glory. Friends, many new things are made. Can you say amen? amen? Many new things are made. God bless you. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you, we can say many is our God. And you've already told us, go ahead and do it. To arise and go over. Lord, let us be a people of courage, a people that will step forward. And Lord, let us be careful to give you all the glory. If there's any near shot of these messages, let them step into what you have for them. Let them get back to the place that the ones were with you if they've wandered away. Maybe there's backsliders listening this morning. Lord, let them step back in uh, to the things that you have for them. Let people step in a new relationship and Lord, surrender their lives. We ask this for your glory and for your honour. Amen.